Hello and welcome to the Build a Soil Bovaria Bassiana product highlight. And again, this is a sales video. So someone that's interested in buying Bovaria Bassiana for their garden, or as we call it, BB. We have a BB plus, we have a liquid. I want to discuss the differences between the two, how you might use it in the garden. We're also going to use this as general education on our product page. And if you watch our normal YouTube, we've got tons of content, free education. This is just about selling a product. Let's start with the powder. This is my favorite. This is what I personally use. And you'll notice it's called BB Plus or Bovaria Bassiana Plus. We used to mix a few different things into here and it kind of made the process difficult. And I wanted to make sure that the quality was kept by preserving the microbes that are in here without mixing anything else into it. So there's two ingredients in here and it's approved for organic use. The manufacturer we get it from, we've gone to great lengths to make sure that they're isolating these from beans and it's done in the United States, the spores. We'll talk more about that. And then it's mixed into an organic graphite talc powder that's used to help lubricate a seed box on the tractor. It's also good to help spread it in the soil and be cost effective because it's only 1 16th of a teaspoon per plant and that's with the carrier. So we're talking, you know, very small microorganisms and we wanna make sure that it's easy to use. So the powder, a 16th of a teaspoon per plant, the best time to inoculate is in the beginning of a plant's life. You can inoculate a seedling and it'll be with the plant its entire life. It actually lives inside the plant. So we'll discuss that as well. The liquid is a lot more concentrated as far as the volume. It's similarly strong, but it only takes an ounce to do an entire acre. So at home, most people just use the smallest bottle with a couple sizes. And I mean, you just take a very small amount, mix it in your water and you can apply it. The difference in application is one is that the powder is easy to apply to soil. This can be mixed up and watered into the soil. It can also be foliar sprayed on the plants or made to have the Bovaria bassiana come into contact with whatever you're trying to get it on um, instead of just soil, like on the leaf area where the graphite powder, you don't want to sprinkle it all over your plant. It's just for the soil. So hopefully that makes sense. The reason I use this is I prefer to treat and we sell this as a natural soil symbiont. So this is a beneficial microorganism. It's a fungi. And there's a lot of words that I'm not gonna try and say. They're kind of outside my expertise. I know a lot about it, but, but essentially what happens is this is a mushroom for lack of a better word, right? That's what a lot of people think of when they think of fungus. And its job is to live out there in normal soils and work in symbiosis with plants. And anytime an arthropod of some sort, an insect, comes into contact with it, it actually infects it and the fungus consumes it and it duplicates from there. So the, the bug or the insect, if you will, is now the food for the mushroom. And it's interesting that one of our favorite mushrooms personally, I always joke about coffee, cordyceps. Cordyceps is a good human health mushroom and the cordyceps um, bassiana is the one that the Canidia of produces this benefit in the soil. So cordyceps, great for humans, Bavaria bassiana from that, really good for the soil. And the way we're gonna use it, for instance, we're gonna start about 4,000 tomato seedlings. We're gonna be selling the starts. I want them to be really healthy. And so instead of me using a pesticide or an insecticide, which they sell these under name, brand names that can be used in organic production for insecticide use. We don't sell ours for insecticide use, but what we're gonna do is I'll put it in my seedling soil when I germinate the seeds. And now the seeds will have this living in them and in the soil, the fungus will be present protecting them and it'll make it so that it is a beneficial compound. Just like we use root wise to make healthy plants, this is an additional microorganism that you can use to make sure that your plants are healthy from day one and they have a interacting relationship with the soil, which is what we're after. So it's best to inoculate day one early on. If you have to inoculate later, that's fine. I would probably just use slightly more. It's very effective, a 16th of a teaspoon per plant. And so that might mean that you actually up the volume a little bit based on the number of plant starts and mix it into your seedling soil, sprinkle it in the tray. You could alternatively use the liquid, water it in. I've even had people that will use a wetting agent and mix the powder in their water and keep it in suspension because it's so fine and they'll irrigate that in. So there's not really like a right or wrong way to use it. It's just, this is really for soil and that's usually for spraying on the soil later if you have to irrigate or for foliar spraying. Now we don't sell this as an insecticide, but a lot of companies do. It's the same thing. Ours is made in the United States. It's not imported from another country. And the manufacturer is really passionate about this. We really like that he's into it. There's lots of different strains. So just like you're a grower, you might have a particular plant that does better and you keep clones of it. Similarly, in the mushroom world, someone that has a really good species is gonna reproduce from that. And it's different. You have 
cultures and petri dishes and things like that, but you want to duplicate the winner. And so he's got a winner of a mixed consortium from the bean plant that is not the same as in all the others. We feel, we feel that it's more potent and that it interacts with the plant really well. So I hope that makes sense. My recommendation, get some of this, everybody get a bag, put it in your soil and use it as a preventative measure. A number of the issues that you might be dealing with could just go away because now the soil is healthier and acting like it should. Oftentimes tillage, fungicides, other reasons will destroy this that would naturally occur in your farm soil. And in potting soil, a lot of times there's other reasons that it's never even been there. And so inoculating early on is the way to go. If you've got questions about Bovaria bassiana and what it does, you can do some research. One of the greatest things is to go to Google or Google Scholar and type in Bovaria bassiana. You might have to look up the spelling to, and you can look for Bovaria bassiana as a plant growth enhancer, growth promotant. You can look at it as an insecticide. There are thousands of studies on a number of different crops. Some of them are shown to produce the alkaloid concentration. Others have looked at flavonoids and terpenes and all these benefits that could potentially exist from this because it interacts in harmony with the plant in symbiosis. And the other benefit is that pests hate it. So while ours is not a pesticide, it doesn't have a label for killing on it because people do that. A lot of us that are in the living soil mindset, the build a soil way, we're thinking, let's prevent it from being a problem. Let's do the less is more approach and let's do this early on so we never have to get to needing an insecticide. Now, this is the same thing as those companies. So you could technically use it as such, but we don't have any directions. We're not going to help you use it for that. Research the information on your own from a labeling standpoint. You want to be very particular with how you use things when you're trying to kill. Good news is for living soil growers, if you do prevention and you're healthy, you should never have these issues. The other thing is when we're selling tomato seeds, I want them to go to their garden and I want them to be a help, not a burden. So anytime you have, like if you run a greenhouse and you're buying plants from other places or you get clones from other people, make sure you put this on there immediately. Sometimes we isolate, we separate and a problem still gets through. This is a way to treat things from a health perspective immediately in case isolation doesn't work. I hope that helps. If you have questions like always, put them in the comments here. We'll be happy to answer them for you so that we can develop a deeper list of questions for people that might be reviewing this information. If you found some really good white paper studies that you've used personally to understand Bavaria bassiana, can you link those in here in the comments too? I'd love this to be a research area for people that are looking at products. And here's the thing, you don't have to buy this from us. There's a lot of companies that sell Bavaria bassiana and you can go buy those and I bet you they'll work very similarly. I think our particular United States made spore is better. And I also believe that the application and the efficacy is better in the sense that we didn't cut it with anything. We're using a true agricultural grade product. One example of where I used the Bovaria bassiana was in when I did the reamend to the three by three bed with the Branton's Royal Revenge. We had not one problem with that entire cycle. The bed was perfect. It was obviously amended via soil test. But the one thing that we added that wasn't part of that soil test was the Bovaria bassiana plus. I always recommend it when you're turning over a new bed or when you're starting new seeds, anything like that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next Build a Soil product highlight.